Welcome to the Nash Attack. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to last week's episode. I have gotten so much lovely feedback. It's been so nice. I know I always start my podcast saying that, but it's true and I appreciate it. And it's what keeps me going because otherwise I, poof, I don't know what would motivate me outside of Bravo reunions right now. Um, but in this episode today, we are going to be talking about AI and the very basics of how to use chat GPT and BARD and don't be scared of these things. That's going to be the first thing we talk about. And then we have to wrap up with some fun, a little bit of laughs and, you know, my favorite topic, reality television. We finally got the Danielle Lindsay fight on Summer House. And I want to talk about the implosion of that relationship. And then Summer House Martha's Vineyard popped off this week. So just a lot of things I'd like to cover on this podcast today. But up front, I want to thank my supporters last week and this week who have used the Buy Me a Coffee feature where you can go to www.thenashtech.com slash tips. And you can do this thing where you quote, buy me a cup of coffee and it legit I mean, it came in handy today because, okay, I'm going to go into a little side tangent. I promise one day I'll stop talking about my layoff unemployment woes, but this is where I am in life. So this is what you're getting. I am on unemployment right now and I am not ashamed of it. (laughs) Actually, I really, I try, I've been trying so hard. I wanted to get a job so bad before going on unemployment just because people I feel like are so judgy wudgy about it I I don't care I mean do what you got to do but when I hear people say it's like well of course people want to just sit around and collect unemployment sit on their butts and collect unemployment rather than get to work like I wish it were that easy where it was just sitting around on my but to collect this money, but the process is painfully long. It takes weeks to get approval in Texas. Like I I have to go to the, the Texas Workforce Commission. It takes like weeks to get approval. Your first week's pay, you get paid like two weeks at a time, which is great. I am not complaining. This money is a godsend. I am very grateful to have it and to have been laid off so I can actually get it. I've never been in this position before because normally I quit jobs for another opportunity that's I've been fortunate enough to do that every other time but no this time it was a layoff why you know this why am I telling you this um but anyway you get paid every two weeks your first week they keep it as some sort of holding week so your first payment is like a half payment you have to log on to this site within a certain time and you have certain days you're assigned to do it. And my day for some reason is Sunday that I have to do this. And this past Sunday, the TWC website was down. So, and it was a mess. It was just a mess. So nobody could apply for their benefit payments because you get them in like two days after you fill out the thing online. Basically you have to fill out a thing saying that you were looking for work And at any point they can audit you and ask to see what activities have you been doing to look for work? And you have a certain amount that you're assigned to do each week and you have to fill out a thing saying you did that and that you had reliable transportation and just all this stuff. And then they give you your little money and it's great. And they make you work for it. But when you get it, it's like such a relief. I still haven't gotten it though (laughs) because the website was down. It finally came back up. But I guess because of the processing or whatever, it's going to take it a couple more days. I don't know. Thank you again to whoever bought me the coffee, because that's really all that I've been wanting and what I've been waiting to get this money for. Like the rest of it's completely spoken for, for bills and life stuff. But I was going to have a little bit to the side so I could get my little Starbucks breakfast and my little Starbucks drink and it just went to hell. It hasn't happened yet, but thank you. But I think I'll be able to make it happen tomorrow, hopefully, because of my new cup of coffee donation. 
and get off my back, TWC. I will report whatever little income I do make from this app. I, you have to report everything that you make. You have to report it all, any little thing that you get. And so fine, I'll report it. Just leave me alone, TWC. Yeah, so that's been an absolute mess. But I'm grateful. At the end of the day, it's adult. It's an adult household, so it's 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 so much easier to deal with. I'm I'm glad I wasn't waiting on that money for food for my kids or something like that. But I know there are people who are in that situation. So that website going down and and people are expecting to get paid on a certain day. Like I'm fine. I'll be okay. But everybody not, might not be. And ugh, okay, that's another. We'll just keep going on this whole side tangent. That's a that's how I feel about the job market right now you know I told you I put out my little LinkedIn post like oh you know help me my network blah 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 I see like oh yeah help me my network please if you have any connections I'll see other people put those out and say I've got x amount of kids to feed or I'm gonna be deported from the country within a certain amount of time if I don't find a job and I, I feel like well I'll be fine. Like those are not things that are going to happen to me. So push those people to the front of the line. Uh, I don't know. Things are just crazy right now, but I feel a turnaround coming soon. We're just going to put that in the streets, in the universe, that good things are coming. And to all my listeners, my friends out there, I hope that you are taking care of yourself and putting your mental health up front. Do what you got to do to take care of yourself and feel okay with yourself and forgive yourself. Be nice to yourself. I have such a hard time with that. So yeah, just we got to take it easy on ourselves, guys. But let's do this. Let's get into our first main topic of the day. We're going to talk about AI and we're talking from a very high level AI for dummies, beginners. I am by no means an expert or anything like that. I use AI every single day. I, I love chat GPT and Bard and the ones that I use. I, I have a really good time using them and they've helped me a lot. So I just wanted to share some of the tips and tricks I found and just make it more accessible to you because sometimes it almost feels sometimes like that's too advanced. That's beyond what I can do. It's just, I can't handle it. I'm not going to deal with it. And this is one of those things I don't want you to do that with. This is, this is an easy thing that you can do. And if you want to get super advanced with it, and my AI actually creates other AI that creates codes. And blah, blah, blah. Like if you want to do all that with it, you can totally do that, but there's just some easy tasks that it can do for you. Let's just start with like a couple of examples of something you can plug into chat GPT and how to actually get started with it. It's going to ask you to log in. And so I just logged in with my Gmail. I'm not trying to hide anything, but you are plugging your information into this. And that's one of the things with AI is that it's always learning and always evolving from information that it's scraping from the internet and information that it's gathering from input from the users and then information it's gathering from other AI applications. Like they're talking about there's AI at this point that's evolved so far. It's created a language that we can't even understand and only it understands. And that's the type of AI stuff that kind of scares me where I feel like did did no one watch Westworld? We we cannot let it get that evolved. But I don't really want to get into the scariness of AI right this second. So we'll just just forget about that for a second that it's talking to itself in the background and Skynet is kind of sort of coming online. But what true AI is, is machine learning, constant learning. Like you can actually ask it a question. Some of the things that I actually use chat GPT for on a daily basis. So with my job searches, I, I had it help me redo my resume. You make a request to chat GPT and then it outputs whatever. So I put in, will you make this document grammatically correct? Or if you want to change the tone, can you make this 
sound more professional. You can ask it to do that with the, with the document. And I like to do those sorts of things in chat GPT. I feel like it's voice is really good compared to Google Bard. Google Bard is another one of the AI tools. I recommend playing with both. And I'm talking to everybody, like you're probably listening like, eh, no, no, beyond me. I mean it today, go log in and just try it. Just ask it some stuff. And, and so many ideas are gonna start to kick to you. Um, but I like chat GPT for conversational stuff. And then I like Bard for search. I want answers to a specific thing, um, because it goes through Google. Now they tout Bard like, oh, it's superior to chat GPT because it goes through Google. Okay. And I think that you can run images. I've never actually run an image through it. I think that's an option, but it tells you, oh, but it's superior because you can click a button and it'll push the results to a Google doc. But I mean, I've been doing that this whole time with chat GPT by cutting and pasting the information from chat GPT into a Google doc. So I don't think it's that spectacular. I like to use Google Bard for number things, math things. I mean, this has been a godsend for me. I'm horrible at math. It's just not my zhuzh. It's never been my zhuzh, not my get down, not my druthers, wish it was, but it's just not. These AI tools have helped me a lot because I've just been able to flat out ask, what's the percentage of this if I need to know? And I mean, you can do that on Google, but break down math even further. I'm trying to look through some of my old history and that's what's cool. Chat GPT will keep your history of stuff that you've done. And I believe, yeah, and Bard does as well. Like they all do that, which is really neat. I'm trying to find some examples of some math stuff that I've done. Oh, okay, here's a good one that I ask. So I was trying, I like Domino's. I love Domino's, not the pizza, the game. I, that's one of the few games that I really am good at and made a point to get good at. I'm no good at spades, don't really understand it. Couldn't play poker with a gun to my head, but I love dominoes and I play a lot online and I wanted to make, because I was looking online for a dominoes guy, just some tips and tricks and things, basically to get points in dominoes. The points, it has to be like a, a, a number of five. So like five, 10, 15, 20, like if they add up to that, that's how you get points. So I asked chat GPT to which combinations. So I ask it because dominoes, there's only zero through 12. And I asked it what combinations from zero to 12 that add up to five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And whenever I ran it, it made a really pretty chart, but it took a long time for it. So in chat GPT, I did this and I tried it at first with five, 10, 15, like all the way up to 30. And it was really slow and it just got kind of wonky in the middle of it. So sometimes you have to break things up. So I did the, I split it in half where I did which combinations zero to through 12 make five through 15. And then I did, you know, 20 through 30 or whatever it was. You sometimes have to split it up. Now with numbers in Google Bard, I put the original one in Google Bard and it gave me a perfect dope answer and it was so pretty and that's why I say I like Google Bard for numbers. I think it's just a little bit better at math stuff. It didn't take it as long and I like the way that it displays better but play with both of them and see which one you like and there's just a million different things that you can do with it. You know if you have a something that's too long. I'll run it through chat GPT and I'll say, make this more concise, make this shorter. And it'll spit out a shorter version of it for me. And you can have it change the tone where if you want it to be angrier or if you want it to be more generic. And that's something that I like about AI. I have a very specific writing tone. If you're in a chat with me or I mean, if you, even if you read like my website or just, I have a very specific way of writing. I feel like 
it's very obvious if I write something, I use ellipsis. I just, it's just, it's just, there's just some telltale signs that it is a Nash attack joint that has been written. And so I like to sometimes like, let's just say maybe a, a negative review. I don't want people to be able to tell that's me or just something generic, like a generic story. Maybe I want to tell on Reddit or something like that. I'll, I'll have it make it more generic and it can do that for me and pull out some of the stuff. Or if you wanted to change the tense of, of something like you have a work document and it says, we go the extra mile and our ethos is this, you can plug that whole document in and say, put this in the first person and it'll spit it back out to you and say, I like this and I do this. And it changes all of the tense for you, which is super cool and helpful. And then I just said right now, like, oh yeah, plug in all the work, work document. I, I, I would actually not recommend doing that. Do, do not plug client data in there and super, per, super personal stuff. Cause again, it's tied to your account. I don't know who on the back end can read this. Um, and your clients did not ever agree to have their documents and things parsed in these AI applications, <laughs> and, unless you have some sort of agreement on your website about that, which I'm sure there probably is some language that you could have your legal team team kick up for you and probably would be something I'd recommend because all the things on my website I've been using, there's an app called podium AI for podcasts, which is really neat. And you, it listened to my last podcast episode. It made a transcription of it. It gave me some suggestions for titles for the podcast. And I've just been rocking with that. I use that on my website as the description. I had to change a few things with it. And that tool plugs into chat GPT. And so I took the description and I ran it through chat GPT. I said, make it funnier and it added some stuff for me and it just it's so fascinating and great how much time this saves you because that's one of the most daunting things about doing this podcast is the after and having to write all the stuff and so podium ai really saved my butt and that's one that i will use a lot in the future because it was just awesome and it saved me so much time and that's why i want you guys to get into these tools because there's there's ways that they can save you time and because I think that because who doesn't need to save a little bit of time, you know? And so there are some like workarounds around the client client data stuff. Um, Cause you can get really cool Excel formulas, which is so helpful. I, I'm pretty good at Excel because I'm good at Google and finding the, the, formulas and stuff via Google. And this has just made it so much faster, so much easier through AI. Like I have, I said, can you give me the Excel formula to make an inventory sheet? And then it broke down exactly how to do it and then what to put in what, what cell and then what row. And it's awesome. It's super helpful. And that was with, you know, more generic information. So th that's how you can kind of get around the, I need to do work formula stuff, but don't plug in your client's information. Don't do that. Nobody's agreed to that. Oh, but for all of those descriptions that I had written on my website, I specify and you see there's like a little parentheses description generated by AI because I technically didn't write it. And that's where we get into kind of the gray area with this stuff, because there's people who, because you can just say, write, write an article about squids here. Hold on. I'll do it. Write a, let's say 300 word article about squids. And here it goes. Like it's, it's generating it right now. Body of the text adaptations of deep sea survival squids possess a range. I mean, it's to, doing all of it's formatted perfectly. They're efficient predators and it's going to hit that 300 count word count because it's able to do that. It's so dope. But at the end of the day, I technically didn't write this and 
is it ethically sound for me to write an article or put something on my website that's like, as a title, Fascinating Creatures of the Deep, Exploring the, dig the Enigmatic World of Squids. It spit out an introduction, the body text, and the conclusion. And it's gonna fit that word count. It's just, it's the craziest thing in the world. Now, is it ethical for me to go and put the fascinating creatures of the deep, this article on my website? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I don't, I say, let people know that, hey, that this is generated by AI. And I think there's a point where some of the stuff you can kind of tell then it's AI. You have to add a little bit of the human element to it. Like there's nothing I would recommend that you just pull straight from AI and don't proofread it and just send it off. Cause something that I like to do for my jobs search, something that helps because you know, everybody needs a cover letter. You can take the job description and then I can take my resume and I'll say chat GPT, write me a cover letter that suits my resume and fits this job description. I'll say, I'm going to give you the resume first and then I'll give you the job description. And then it'll ask like, oh, okay, give me the resume. And you give it the resume and then it generates it for you. And it's, it's so helpful. Oh my God. Cause honestly, like child, I'm applying for so many jobs. I don't have time to really like because they that's what they want is for you to you know write a cover letter that really is specific to each job like i girl i don't have time for that especially for something that you're probably not even going to read ever to where i've i've had to outsource that to chat gpt but i always look at them and then I have paragraphs and things from other ones that I'll mix with it. But that's just an idea of something that you can do with it. I mean, you can get crazy with it. Like I was explaining it to my husband. He asked me, okay, ask ChatGPT to make like a crazy recipe for me. So I said, make an egg and gin sriracha. And those, because those are things that what? Like gin, eggs, and sriracha do not go together at all. Like that's... Uh, it's absolutely disgusting and it's still managed it says traditional sriracha sauce does not typically include eggs or gin in its ingredients but here's a recipe that incorporates both and it made that recipe for me so like you could go and see like what you have in your kitchen and ask it to make you a recipe and it can do that there's so many fun weird ways to use this tool and I just want you everyone to feel empowered to use it it's not just for the super tech where's the smart blah 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 no it's for everybody everybody get out there and use this and make it make your life easier now there's some things that I've noticed are anomalies that kind of don't work on it like I asked both Google Bard and chat GPT tell me plays that have only four men and three women characters. And every single time it was wrong. It told me Noises Off. Noises Off has a billion women in it. Like every single answer was wrong. So some of the stuff isn't quite there yet, but whenever you ask a question, there's like a thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs down that and make sure it knows like, no, this is incorrect. And it's going to ask why, how can this be improved? And then you tell what the additional feedback is. And that's the learning aspect of it. And it learns and eventually somebody will ask that question and it will give the right answer. And it will not say rent because rent has so many more women than two. They did a really bad job with that question. So some of it's not great. But for like sprucing up a cover letter or list all of the companies that offer a free discount on your birthday, that kind of crap, it's so perfect for that. It's fun for that. Um, what are the five closest cities to Tucson? Things like that, that where, where you want to, where it would take you multiple Google searches and you just want to pare it down to one. That's where I really like to use chat GPT and Bard and my little AI tools and then Podium AI, which is really cool. And I'm just promoing it because I love it. That has been a lifesaver 
to spit out my podcast descriptions. It's so neat. Like what a cool tool. And there's a million different AI programs that are coming out. There's image based ones like we could get into it if we really wanted to. But I wanted to just kind of get into the tip to tip tip top of what this stuff can do. Because, you know, there's people who are doing AI where it sounds like a certain artist, but they're singing another artist's song. And it's weird, ethically questionable stuff like that. Like, I wish I could find the thread, at, the Reddit thread, where there was a girl who was saying that she plugged in all of her boyfriend's old text messages into some AI program. And it basically chats with her as him. And it's super unhealthy and definitely definitely morally and ethically not cool um so there's like this weird side of it and so many things you can do with it where it's good where it's bad I'm going to just assume that the Nash attack listeners we're just going to do the good stuff with it and we're 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 not going to create chrome extensions that scam people and stuff like that oh god because that's the other thing there's so many AI Chrome extensions that make life easier that can like organize your notes and stuff like that. But we'll get into all of that another time, the more advanced versions of AI. But for right now, just just log into ChatGPT, log into Bard and ask it some random questions and just see what it kicks back. And then that's the cool thing about it. It just keeps going like one page your resume as you're working on it, it continues to work off that same first prompt and building from that. And so see what you can build off of and, and learn and how you can help yourself. There's so many ways that people are using this, like have some fun with it. It's, it's, it can be fun. Like you can ask it, explain something to me, but do it as Fraser Crane or, Tell me about how One Direction broke up, but explain it to me like Lady Whistledown from Bridgerton. Those are like some of the stupid things that I've done. And it's and it does that. And it's fun to do that. But I don't want to get into this because it's it's a whole podcast in itself. But that's just the proof right there that AI, it's it's never going to replace writers and in humorist and things to make television and to make comedy and stuff like that because how does it have the voice of Fraser Crane because somebody had to write that character and it had to exist I hope that this was somewhat helpful to you I hope that you get started playing around with the AI tools and again like I said we'll get into the ones where you can load in a picture and it'll identify the picture for you and tell you what's in it and then there's some that can build pictures for you or you say make an image of a cat in Las Vegas wearing a top hat and then it'll create that for you like that's where that weird Balenciaga Pope picture came from like there's an app that that created that like that can create those images and it just like scrapes from so many different things it's like well this is what this usually is and this is who that usually is all right, we're going to combine it. And there you go. The Pope wearing Balenciaga. AI. We are living in the friggin' future, people. Oh, this is super random. I don't care. You have to follow on Instagram. I love AI Muppets. There's, I don't know what, I don't know who or what that is or where they're doing it from, but there's somebody, they create a different Muppet or like a bunch of Muppets every day. And like they're these AI generated Muppets and they write the funniest backstories for them. So I just love it. Like there's just a lot of weird stuff like that going on with AI. It's a good time. Get into it. Let me know um, if you are already using AI, how you're using it and how it's making your life easier. If you haven't used it yet and you're going to give it a try or, you know, you just tried it after listening to this, please let me know how it went. I am very excited to hear from people who are just now getting into chat GPT and Bard and don't feel, don't feel like you're not tech savvy enough to do it because you are, you got a smartphone, you got a laptop. Oh yeah. That's the other thing. I think chat GPT, the app isn't available yet. Like I do all of this on my laptop. I, I don't know if it works on mobile. 
I don't, I'm one of the few people in the world. I know there are children. I see children all the time with iPads. I've never owned an iPad. I'm just putting that out here in the streets. I have never in my life owned an iPad. So I have no idea if you can use this on iPad, maybe, probably. Great. I, I don't know. Um, but I know that it works on my MacBook Pro. <laughs> All right. So let's transition. We're just going to wrap up with a couple lighter topics. I want to talk about reality television, particularly both summer houses. We're just going to keep talking about those because last week I wasn't able to really get in to summer house OG as deep as I, I needed to. But now having seen the Lindsay Danielle breakdown, that was a lot of buildup for not a lot of conversation. I am, I mean, it's probably for the best. It wasn't a screaming match and people throwing lit candles at each other and stuff that happened on that show last year. Someone threw a wine glass at a girl and the girl threw a lit candle back at her. It was wild, but, um, nothing like that happened. Danielle clearly is just in the midst of it and can't see outside of herself and outside of her own feelings to remotely comprehend how she's hurt Lindsay. And she's only thinking about how she is hurt and whenever she came around the corner and all the people, like the rest of the house, this was so icky. Them running around to like listen to this fight happen, which, okay, you're not the audience of the show. You go to the party and, and, and generate more content, more interest out there. You guys sitting around listening, isn't it? Like that wasn't the move. And so whenever the fight was over, they were all just there to hug Danielle after she just screamed at Lindsay, even though she ruined Lindsay's engagement weekend by being mean about it and making Carl feel guilty about everything. I'm just, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in how the season went, how it ended. Everybody keeps saying they want to cast refresh. I don't know what it is that I need from Summer House OG, but... This season was good, not great, not my favorite. I am not going to lie. I did like the new additions to the show, though. All of them. I even liked Chris. I think Chris was fun. And they should honestly add his friend, Jerez. I think he would be another good male cast member. He's super cute. He's fun, funny, been around a couple of times. And I enjoy him. I think consider adding him because it works better whenever we have real friends living in the house but like Gabby and Sam loved them I just found out I did not know that Corey like Sam's boyfriend I did not know Corey has like anti-trans views no I did not I wanted them to be a cute couple I thought that was going to be great but no turns out he's a turd <sighs> So I'm now just like, I don't want him back next season. And I really thought I did. It's just like such a bummer to find that out about that guy. Because I love Sam. I thought she was such a light in a dark season. And Gabby was just adorable. She ended up being really, really cute. And at the beginning, I was not sure about her. She was given some very stuck up vibes. And then as time like went on, she very, very much loosened up. I think that's a defense mechanism you know she let a lot of that go and ended up making some really good friends and was a great cast member by the end and kept the conversation going because we need those neutral people who aren't sitting around rooting for Lindsay's demise because that's the whole cast otherwise and that's it's just like what's the point I'm not that mad at her so it's hard as an audience member to care and to watch people do that it's just it's not the move it wasn't great I'm ready for them to wrap up this season again I say I don't know what I want to happen I thought the Maya Oliver stuff was so whack you don't get to play the game of going on a reality show and then like cover your mic are you mic'd up we're not gonna talk about this like I there's some things like sure we're not gonna talk about on camera but you breaking up with your boyfriend, girl, you should have done that. Grab the camera, held it up to your mic and said, get out of my house, you cheating loser, and gave him the boot. So I don't know if they had some sort of agreement in the background 
where on the show we're going to look like we're together. So come to these events, but I don't care what you do off to the side. Something is weird with that relationship. It was weird the whole time. They were never affectionate that, you know what? That sister cousin vibes right there. Them's is sister cousins was Maya and Oliver. Cause that's the most generic relationship I've ever seen. It was so bleh and meh and they seem so uninterested and unaffectionate with each other. It was not cute. And I not shocked that he was cheating the entire time. And I hate that for her, but she ended up not being a nice girl this season, Maya. She did a lot of running around and whenever Lindsay got engaged and she had to call Sierra, bitch, bitch, guess who just got engaged? Like it was a piece of gossip and not a piece of good news. And then her running around to hear the fight with Lindsay and Danielle tonight was really messy. And there was one point where Danielle and Amanda got in a fight and Maya's like, no, she's not going to talk to her. She's just, she just became a little producer this season. Like she was going to produce what everybody was doing. And I'm going to tell Sam off to the side. She's talking too much. And I'm going to tell him to cover his mic and, Girl, you aren't a producer, so you need to sit down and stop and share the tea because people tuned in for the tea. Girl, we don't care about Oliver. You think I give a fuck about it, Oliver? 100% no. Who cares? Like, oh, I, w I just now I, I wish for, for her that she had ugh, given him given him more smoke because he deserved it but oh that whole thing was bizarre and then her chasing Corey, that it was just weird something about it was just weird she was having a tough time that's the one character where i would be fine if she didn't come back everyone else i'm fine with i know a lot of people don't love sierra i think she's a good fairly neutral character this season like she's come around to being that like last season very polarizing and I don't know if Austin was aside from Luke like her first boyfriend or like the first guy to ever like her or what but that was so ridiculous watching her run around after Austin Kroll with her eight foot tall model ass looking like a queen something about her trying to date never quite works out but her throwing a party for herself in the city that was super cute and that was fun and I loved that so I mean there were moments of summer house that was good this season otherwise but then there was just a lot of we're gonna rehash the same stuff and then a lot of unsaid stuff and then things that we have to know about from social media that I just don't care about and I hope maybe they wrap it all up at the finale but I'm hoping next season is better Right now, what really has my heart is Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Uh, sorry for saying that Mariah wasn't my favorite character because, spoiler alert, she got booted from the house. And then we're going to have some spoilers here for Martha's Vineyard if you haven't watched the newest episode yet. But either way, it's fine. You'll be fine even with the spoilers because they also kick the guy Phil out, the guy who came in being gross and weird and who pooped in the toilet and wouldn't flush it the most juvenile attack on the household ever so immature glad they got him out but yeah jasmine kicked out her bff sister cousin mariah told her she had to go but in this last episode i didn't think i could love amir more and he has just he just grows on me every week. I know that I said he wasn't the brightest bulb last week, but he, he, he does that on his own. He may, he, he said that. Him, I think he even said that himself maybe, or something like that. I meant that in the, the sweetest way possible because I do like him and I think he is so funny and he keeps the comedy coming. I, I love Amir. It turns out he was the one who started the entire washing machine laundry fight and then didn't say anything about it. Like he rose his hand a little bit, just a little bit, and then didn't say that, hey guys, this is my fault, which he's just a delight. I love him. And Jordan is growing on me. This is one of the, the parts of watching a reality se series that I love when I start to really 
like the characters and find favorites and get in the routine with them. And I know this sounds crazy. If you don't watch reality TV, you're like, you are such a loser, which is fine. Whatever. I don't care. I think I'm fabulous. I'm gone with the wind. Fabulous. I, I love whenever I start to really like all of the characters, even the flawed ones. That's one of the things I love about reality TV. Like even the bad guys, we got to have them because it makes the show so good. I'm going to give you another little spoiler, just another little tiny tidbit morsel. So, you know, know the guy, Nick, the one who I was telling y'all last week is just running around and he was in everybody's DMS and that I'm sure he's losing it in the DMS right now because he is just, he loves that. He was talking to all the girls trying to figure out, trying to get that booty lined up before he got there. Like who is down to clown? Like he was trying to figure it out. And then we get to the end of this episode and surprise, he's got a girlfriend. He should have told us that. Yeah, we are now, it's three episodes in. I think they're five days into the 15 day trip. And he's just now revealing this little nugget of information. Hilarious. It's such a good show. I, I need you guys to watch Summer House Martha's Vineyard because I need them to get another season. It is a breath of fresh air. It is comedy. I mean, I laugh so hard. They're all so funny. It's great TV. Great TV. Oh my God. And one more thing. So the one girl Shanice who came in the house who I was very defensive of last week, like, cause Nick didn't like her cause she didn't look like her Instagram, which now that I've seen it, it's kind of true. And not even in a, Oh, she's not wearing makeup kind of way in a wait is this a different person kind of way? I should have researched it a little bit further, but Hey, I am not an investigative journalist. I am just a man trying to get by. I'm worried about my health, my wealth, my family. There's fucking man eating Nile crocodiles in Florida. That's, (laughs) that's a rant from the most recent Vanderpump rules, but no, seriously, like I should have probably looked that up beforehand. And She is also the one who, before the season started, there was a a piece of gossip that came out, but I didn't read it or paid any attention because I was like, I don't know who any of these people are. This is going to mean nothing to me. I'll wait for the season to start. Now I've read it because it's come out and it's come out on the show that the girl Shanice, the one I was defending, she actually stalked the living shit out of her last boyfriend to the point where he was trying to get a restraining order, the text messages, she says it's, I did do a lot of that stuff, which I would deny vehemently on a TV show, or I would say nothing about because I definitely wouldn't want people thinking that of me, but she's like, yeah, no, I did some of that stuff. I definitely did some of it. I mean, any piece of it is bad. So I, I am pretty gooped. Like the text messages are scary. Like it's a bunch of text messages. It was a guy named Norman. Norman, Norman, don't ignore me. Um, if you know Jody Arias, I'm crazier than that. Uh, just add me back. Just add me back. And then you can see from his email an OnlyFans account getting started. Like she starts a bunch of accounts in his email. And then she starts dummy accounts, apparently, and sends I don't know what to his friends and family, apparently, but like as him. So he's having to come out and be like, that's not me. See, these are the things it's all alleged because I don't know what she actually did or didn't do. She says she called him a lot, but who knows what a lot means. Sleeping outside of his house is something else he alleges. I don't know. But it just seems like one of the things where... I love these reality shows, but y'all have got to vet these people better. Like how, how, this is not a person you should probably like let loose in a house with a bunch of cute dudes. And already in the house, she's shown that she doesn't really have great boundaries. Like the guy Amir, she's into him fine, but she just comes out topless and has a conversation with him. Like, Hey, okay. I'm no prude, whatever, like do what you do. But 
it's a little much and with this guy you don't know him that well and then she's touching on the other guy Alex that's John Legend's cousin Alex I've John Legend's cousin that's what we're gonna call him but um she won't stop touching on him and he's uninterested so she's just a one of those characters that I hope is one and done where it's good tv but it's where it's really interesting tv but uh I just don't know if we really need it to be that dark and that deep cute girl but Again, we should have vetted just a little bit better before letting her move into the house. I'm just, I would probably be concerned, but the other women in the house say they know her and they back her up and they don't think that that stuff happens. So cool, whatever. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the crazy one. I don't know. But that's the tea on Shanice. And uh, yeah, Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Please watch it, guys, because I am obsessed. I need you to be obsessed. I have one last thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, the Lala Kent documentary or the Randall Emmett documentary. It's actually a Randall documentary. It's uh, what is it called? The Randall scandal, the Randall scandal, love, loathing and Vanderpump. Yes. And if you read that LA times article, none of this information is new to you. It's just a reenactment of everything from that is all the stuff about his, his agency, all the Bruce Willis stuff. And if you haven't read that, you're like, wait, agency, wait, Bruce Willis stuff. Yes, go watch it. If you don't know any of this stuff, the Randall scandal, you need to go watch it because it is really uh, mind blowing that this stuff is allowed to go on, that this stuff happens out here in Hollywood, but it's, it's totally believable. I mean, there's, more freaks out there than I ever imagine. Um, but if you if you are familiar with the situation, you can possibly skip it. Uh, the only piece of new information that I got from it, and I'll just okay, I'll give a little spoiler and just a tidbit. The thing I, I one thing I didn't know is Lala's mom, she does an interview, a talking head for the documentary, and she's talking about whenever Lala gives birth to Ocean. And that Randall, for some reason, was so tired, he wanted to get a hotel, hotel nearby, but instead he got a hospital room at the hospital and had to have his assistant bring him all this, bring him fireball and all this weirdness. And he almost missed the birth. So just all this questionable stuff and he, the bad behavior with him and the Lala relationship really started when she was pregnant. And I kind of knew that, but they finally solidified that, I guess, and put a date on that. And so that was interesting. But otherwise, it was all stuff I knew. And my last thoughts on that, I am finally to the point where, or not really finally to a point, I've never, well, maybe, I don't know. I shouldn't say never. I just, Lala gets questioned so much when it's like, this man is an abuser, a user, and a loser, why does she have to take so much of the brunt of that? I'm just kind of past it. I get it. I guess she should have known more and should have known better and cheating and whatever. And no, I get it. That is bad. But at this point, she's got a kid with this dude. And I, I mean, the, the, these stories are true. She has to get custody of this kid. She can't, like, please, like, and how terrifying that he's even putting her through this. She thought that this was someone who loved her and that she was going to be with him forever. And to see how it's all fallen apart, like, I just, I have a lot more sympathy for Lala than, I don't know if I, orig if then I originally did or than other people do. I just, I feel like, there's not a loud enough chorus of sympathy for that situation because that sort of thing happens to so many women where you just end up with some guy who turns out to be a bum once you have the kid like and I hate that for people and I don't want that for her and she's always having to answer for that and I'm like that's not fair she did okay she's apologized for for what she she said she didn't know for one and I think she's even apologized beyond that like for the cheating stuff like to where where I feel for her and 
I think this was probably, this is something I, I don't think I could recover from because it seems like the deceit is just, it's beyond, it was like brainwashing almost because he was really making himself out to be something else that he wasn't like brainwashing, like cult stuff, just not good. It's not good. And I could see how you get mixed up in it. And he was the one doing that. So let's question him. And I want to take a little bit of the heat off of her. I am not even the biggest Lala fan, but I definitely sympathize with her. And after watching the documentary, I sympathize with her even more, but I've, I've been sympathizing with her for a hot minute, especially since reading that article, like, whoa, this guy was definitely double life in it out there. But yes, watch the Randall scandal. Sorry for going on so long. I appreciate you guys listening to this podcast. And this was a big one. It's a meaty one. We covered quite a few topics today. I hope that you get out there and use AI and empower yourself and that you check out Summer House OG now that we have the implosion of the relationship. We'll cover more of that once the reunion happens. Maybe something more interesting will come of that. I don't know. And then please watch Martha's Vineyard. For some reason, they're adding more characters next week. I think we need to stop adding people to the house. I'm done with that. I'm starting to connect with my main people, but I need you guys to connect with them, okay? Go and connect with them. Follow everybody on Instagram. Ooh, follow me on Instagram at the Nashtag Podcast. You can also hit up www.thenashtag.com slash tips if you want to buy me a cup of coffee or pay to have me watch an episode or if you have a song you want to get out there that's yours, you don't have the copyright to, I'll make it my theme song. There's a lot of things on that little tips page for you that you can purchase. You can listen to this podcast episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube, everywhere where you can listen to podcasts if there's a place where you are listening to your podcast and i am not there let me know and i will get there just for you i will be wherever you need me to be okay thank you so much again for your time i hope that you have such a good one and i will talk to you when i talk to you